Carrying on from before, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on uh, action mapping, which is where we take the input of, say, your keyboard or your mouse, and we're going to apply a physics impulse or a jump, right? Yeah. So, uh, is it actually, that's a good question. Is it going to be an impulse or is it going to be movement through the vector? We're simply going to apply an impulse, an impulse. to the physics. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to uh, proceed from here. Yeah. So this is fairly straightforward. What you have to keep in mind first is that we need the assets lib config default profile.xml file. This is something we copied over from the first version shooter template, and all the other templates except for blank have this. All it does is simply map various actions to action maps and inputs. In this case, the action map named player contains any number of actions, in this case, jump, mm -hmm. which is mapped on press, so whenever we press the key, Mm -hmm. This is sent back, and the actual key in this case for the keyboard being space. Yes, and keep in mind you can actually map this to other controllers. As you can see up top, it's a different platform, so if you wanted to use like an Xbox controller per se, yeah. that's an option as well and would be done through this profile as well. Exactly, so you could have multiple inputs, input methods mapped at the same time. So jump could be mapped to the A button on an Xbox controller mm -hmm. and also space for keyboard at the same time. Okay. Just simplifying it for you so you don't have to do all of this in code. Let's go ahead and close this and go into the code. So to make this a bit more readable, we'll simply move these to a new line and then implement the iAction listener interface. What we'll do is we'll go to the definition of this. And how did you get there? What was the hotkey? Uh, the normal hotkey in Visual Studio is F12. Okay. If we right click this, it will actually tell us F12 to go to definition. Mm -hmm. And then if you have Visual ins Assist installed, you can also press Alt G. Now we simply want to implement the pure virtuals, which you see here, only on action. Copy that over. And there we go. Now this function will be called whenever the actual action maps are triggered by an input event. In our case, we can simply do a simple check if a string matches. So the name, let's see what this contains. Yeah, so we get the actual uh, the string and compare it to jump, which is what we defined in XML. And when that's triggered, this is actually sent. So all we want to do is use the p underscore action impulse action helper then apply an impulse inside it being the impulse vector and set that to uh, simply just up so which value should we set this to maybe five i was thinking five yeah mm -hmm. this might be too little too much we'll see and then what we have to do is check do we have a physical entity available and what we do is simply say i physical entity physics it both get entity get physics or get physical entity both of these works just as fine they return the exact same thing if we have a physical entity as in if physicalization up here worked mm -hmm. this will not be null and we can utilize it then we simply call action and apply our impulse right away ignore the second parameter here be thread safe this is used if we are operating directly on the physics thread but if we know that we aren't or if we're unsure just use the default value and we'll use a more safe setting. Now let's try compiling this. And Since that works. However, we also have to do one more thing in terms of listening for actions. And this is the same uh, structure as capture view. We simply say capture view, capture actions, this, compile, and then start the project. So let's see what happens now. Hopefully, success. Oh, yeah. <laughs> load a level spawn and try pressing space a few times nothing is happening question is why is nothing happening if we try debugging quickly we can have a look and you're attaching this to the process exactly so I'm attaching the debugger to a running process in order to find out what's going wrong so I'll put a breakpoint in on action see if this is being triggered which is actually not and that's a very interesting thing if an actual reasoning for this is that we completely forgot to uh, load the specific action map 
all we have to do is specify the path to the default profile okay. and then also load and initialize the player action map if we don't do this nothing will be sent since the code isn't aware of what's going on mm. so to do this let's first acquire the action map manager through the game framework and get our action map manager and then i believe you call the init action maps function with this path to the file you want to load in this case libs config and default profile.xml then we also want to make sure that we actually have the entire action map manager enabled because if it's not it will not be sending any events at all mm -hmm. and then we also have to enable the player action map and we'll use the enable action map function for this so we grab the string here whoops <laughs> is it case sensitive do you know it might actually be case sensitive i don't remember but keep in mind that in general stick to the same case that you use in the file okay. otherwise it might not work or if you're unlucky it could work for example on windows and then when you switch to consoles or linux it doesn't work anymore uh, best to play it safe oh yeah and what we also have to do is one final thing of setting the action listener and this will do by acquiring the action map. So we'll do p action map equals p action map manager get action map layer, and simply make sure that we oh sorry set a listener to this. And if we set our entry ID. Whoops. This then makes sure that the game object receives the action event. Mm -hmm. And then the game object eventually forwards that to the I action listener that we specified in capture actions. Okay. Now what you have to keep in mind is that we are intending to rework the system for 5.4 to simplify it a bit and make it a bit more entity component friendly. But for now, this is the process for handling action map events. So let's go back into the editor. Second time's a charm. Yeah. <laughs> now spawn and let's see nothing happening still now let's debug this and we actually do get the event what is the string it is jump we do get in here no oh my shortcuts are working now let's see here how do I Continue from this menu. Uh, yeah, there we go. Continue. So we get into this menu and we hopefully go in here and apply the impulse, which we in fact do. So we apply an impulse up and it should be working. What is possible is that the impulse we specified is too low considering the mass we selected. That's a good point, actually. Exactly. Yeah. So an impulse of 5 when our mass is 100 might be a bit too low. So let's go crazy and set this to 50 and see what happens. Now launch the editor again and hope this works. The good thing is that we have a look at how we can debug it effectively. And this is a very good skill to have. Essentially, whenever you have problems, just debug it, see what's going on and see what happens. And you can actually see the impulse affecting the object here. It's a bit too low, even though we increased it. Maybe uh, 500? Let's go for 500. Let's just go insane. We want to increase this and restart the editor as many times as possible. Oh, wait, what does that mean? Uh, 9,000 or whatever? Yeah, over 9,000. Over 9,000. Yeah, we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's not create a new level. Load the level. And here we go. We can actually slow the descent and go up. And we're falling and we're going up. Makes sense. And think of many games we can make with this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And that's it. So I guess uh, from here, we'll figure out how to do something, maybe the orbiting and whatnot. Uh, or in, in the case of even the flow graph stuff, what I did was I checked for uh, the entity's range for a certain vector height. So when we look at this, we keep pressing. And obviously, you don't want to jump again if you are not within the range of the terrain. It doesn't make sense if it jumps all the time. So that would be a case where you could extend it. But I think for the scope of this video, it works quite well. Mm -hmm. 
And I think we can carry on and see what else we can do uh, regarding entities and how they can be used inside of the scene.